Welcome to this broadcast belongs to them. That's right. Them. And by them, we mean you. This podcast is dedicated to King Diamond and everything that he's done, music wise. Right? Yes. Well, yeah. And, you know, I other than concert videos, I don't think he's ever really been in a movie or anything. I don't think so. But he does drive uh, his NASCAR once in a while. So I don't know hmm. if he has anything with that but we're not that's not part of the show <laughs> no, I, a disease i could add a little uh, little picture of him on the bottom of this drive-by in a little nascar <laughs> that a go daddy go kingy <laughs> hey that's a good idea all right so we're gonna start with black rose are you ready oh yeah all right great well let me tell you first that uh, we have a couple guests that are going to join us on this podcast. And um, on this show, for the Black, we're starting with Black Rose. So uh, for Black Rose, we have keyboardist Ib Enemark. I finally was able to get a hold of him. He's going to uh, tell us a little story about the band and how it got started and how it ended and all the good stuff in between. And um, he's actually in a new band now called uh, Purple Eclipse. And uh, he will talk about that at the end of this uh, segment here. Not this segment, but, you know, at the end of the Black Rose segment. So, anything else you want to add? Nope. I uh, covered pretty much everything. It's a very good interview, though, so it's, definitely it, make sure you watch the whole thing. Yeah, It'll be broken down to about four parts, I believe. So. And if you like Black Rose, you're going to like Purple Eclipse, I think. I think so. Yeah, very good. And they'll actually be on our regular show sometime in December. So keep make sure you subscribe to our show, Rap Salad Review. Uh, or you can go to our website, RapSaladReview.com, or podcasts uh, everywhere, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, all that stuff. Subscribe to everything so you can get notifications when our new episodes are up. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Yep. We're your one-way ticket to midnight. That's right. So, Black Rose. Basically, the beginning of King Diamond. I mean, he was in uh, Brainstorm first, but then he joined uh, Black Rose, which was already, uh, you know, kind of a started band already, and had most of these songs done. And yeah, the, this is really where he starts developing the, the makeup and the stage persona and the props and all that, though, so. Yeah, this is where he really gets into his character. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. This is really where King Diamond starts. Like he might have had, had a band before this, but he right. wasn't. That's quite why we're ready yet. Right. But. That's why we're starting with Black Rose. So the official start, right, of Kim Peders Peterson. Kim Peterson. Yep. yep. Kim Bendix Peterson, as I believe how you say his middle name. Or maybe he's got two last names. I don't know, man. So I, All these no. different countries with their different languages and the hyphens and the shit, but whatever. I just read it like it's written. <laughs> <laughs> it's what it is. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so anyway, he was joined by uh, guitarist Jorn. Jorn? Uh, or Jorn. I'm going to say Jorn. Uh, Jorn, that's probably, yeah. Right? That's how we have said it. Yeah. Yeah. Jorn, Jorn Bitcher. Uh, Jesper Weber. For some reason, uh, every other country but uh, the United States... Uh, doesn't pronounce J, so everything's a J is a Y. So, Jesper Weber. 
bassist, uh, drummer Kurt Jurgens, and um, like I announced before, special keyboard, a uh, special guest to, uh, for this uh, thing is going to be keyboardist Ib Anamark. And uh, yeah, so that's it. So when um, you know they would perform live and stuff like that, they would they you know people would uh, you know critics or whatever would you know write stuff up about them being like you know um, they would they could pro- possibly rival Alice Cooper or Kiss you know with the the way their stage show was because King would all you know do all these crazy things that it, it gets into all that stuff during the interview. So I don't want to ruin too much of it, but uh, yeah, with all the things that they would do on stage, they you know. Had a good stage show and uh, put on, you know, like like Alice Cooper or Kiss would, you know, put on a big production, you know. Oh, but yeah. Un- yeah, unfortunately, it wasn't really meant to be because uh, no. they're cut short in a very funny, pretty funny way, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, yeah, it's good. <laughs> Especially seeing what, you know, what became of King Diamond, you know, what he is now, you know, and yeah. seeing this is what. Yeah. It's kind of funny, so please stick around for that. Kind of shocking, but uh, before we get started, we're gonna go by. Uh, we're gonna go through each song. We'll do we'll do about like four songs, and then we'll do Ibs interview, and then next week we'll do another four songs and Ibs interview, and so on, so on, so on. Yep. So, anything else before we start? No. All right. Good. All right. First song: Locked Up in the Snow. Great song, instantly memorable keyboard riff. Uh, yeah, did, did, cool did, did, guitars. Did, did. Yeah, uh, great rhythm line. King's vocals sound great on this. Real haunting. Um, this is actually one of the songs where I can pretty much make out the full lyrics. So, <laughs> really, like what? Yeah. Oh man, I have to <laughs> you on the spot. To it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I. <laughs> It's not that easy. Like I'd have to transcribe it beforehand. I can't just pull it out of my head like that. Yeah. No. Yeah. But um, Break it's uh, it's great. I think you know this would have been by Deep Purple or something like that. It uh, would have been a hit. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. It uh, like you said, it starts off with that uh, catchy uh, organ in the beginning. Pretty cool. I don't know. I like how that sounds. You know, you don't hear that stuff nowadays. I like that, and I like uh, the, both the drum beat and the sound to the drums on the right. track a lot, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, nothing sounds natural like that anymore. Everything sounds processed now. Yeah, everything is uh, processed through a computer, and sounds change, and nothing sounds real anymore. But this is this is as real as possible, because this is in their little studio with two microphones, right? Their rehearsal space with two microphones. Yep. Yep. Uh, just picking it up kind of ambiently. So, uh, quite frankly, although the sound quality is a little low, I'm uh, amazed it sounds as good as it does. Although, right. I mean, they had to master it a little bit to put it on yeah. CD, but still. Yeah, no, it's it's good for what they uh, what they used to record it on. But uh, yeah, it's cool to hear actually somebody doing backups with King because you know on his uh, other you know Merciful Fate and King Diamond stuff he's doing all the backups. Nobody's you know singing with him even live. Nobody does the backups. Well, now his wife does it, but you know you don't. Yeah, hear... just the backups. Yeah. <laughs> That's, we'll get to that later. Later. <laughs> Not that I have anything wrong with it. Oh, that's one thing I, I do want to do, do want to say because um, uh, as I was driving uh, earlier and I was listening to this just to get a refresher for doing this is, um, you know, we we're huge fans of King Diamond, but mm-hmm. we don't have to like every song, and we're gonna say that you know if there's a song that we kind of don't care for, it's it's gonna happen. You know, we can't like everything. You know. Yeah, so some stuff just isn't great. So, you know, don't take it to heart. It's just our opinions. You know, you have your opinions, please, in the comments, write them. Please tell us why we're stupid for thinking this or that song is, is good or or why we're stupid for thinking this song is bad. So take nothing to heart. Oops, sorry. Take nothing to heart that we say, but just this is just for people that may not know, might not know King Diamond or any of his albums and might want to check it out. You know, even for the fans who do know everything about King and want to know everything, so want to know more but um 
but yeah, this this is great, great song, really catchy chorus. Um, like I said before, I like the backup stuff; it's pretty cool. Um, and King also, he doesn't really have his vocal style down yet, so it's not what you know him to be like today. But you can tell he is kind of getting there. Um, he's, he's getting there, but it's more um, here is more like uh, King's take on like seventy Scorpions or something right. like that. Right. Because yeah. uh, he styles his voice a little bit differently, I think. Not so much because he hasn't necessarily discovered everything he could do yet, but also because the style of music is different, too. I mean, right. Merciful, yeah, Mer- Merciful Fate was still based off progressive stuff like this, but uh, the falsettos don't really have a place with what's going on here. Right. I mean, he does hit some high notes, but uh, this isn't them. <laughs> right. No, not at all. Yeah. And, um, oh, man, what was I going to say? Uh Ah oh, man, so, the way he, the way he, um... oh, what is that string there? My headphone <laughs> cord. Oh, 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 I don't remember. I'll, I'll remember it later. Anyway, uh, I'm black market Spider Man. That's why it's black. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is, man. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, like I, shot I get it. Out yes, my hand. yeah, <laughs> yes, it, I, get it. It, I have to color him black with a sharpie, otherwise I get sued by the estate of Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's better than assume by uh, Gene Simmons, right, King? Yeah. <sighs> All right. So basically, uh, you can tell what this song is about by the title, Locked Up in the Snow. It's about being at a ski lodge. And it's snowing out. You can't go out because it's still on snow. Well, no. So you get locked <laughs> up to freeze to death. Exactly. Yeah. That's terrible. All right. Uh, next song, Holy Mountain Lights. Um, in the booklet, it says the song is about a uh, sighting of a mysterious woman who was anything but holy. Holy Mountain Lights. I mean, I, I could see that. It's got kind of that ritual feel, you know, both in the rhythm lines and how the keyboards are done. Like yeah. Supernatural, but like an early black man. Oh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. This one uh, reminds me a little bit, especially when the, the song starts and the guitar is like ding, 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 sounds like Devil Eyes a little bit. It does a little bit, yeah. yeah. The, the, uh, this is one of the ones that reminds me a lot of uh, like early Sad Wings era, Sin After Sin, Judas Priest, too. Oh, yeah. yeah I can yeah. get that. Um, I love the lead into the chorus part. Um, I, li- I like the stops that, and the slowdowns that they do in the song. Uh, one thing that I thought was weird, though, was uh, there was like an echo during the stops in the middle of the song. Yeah, no. I've always wondered how they did that, or if it was... See, at first, I, I listened to this album a ton of times, and at, at first I thought maybe it was just the way he stopped playing the drums and it echoed, but right. it does it to King's voice and the guitar, too, so it makes me think it's something in the recording. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I can see you can kind of if you hit the drums light enough, you can you can create that effect. But that's oh, a yeah. pretty hard thing to do, a hard effect to do. Like everybody all in sync like that. It's just weird. I mean, it's possible, but then again, you know that you can tell even though this is just a rehearsal that they're really tightening in time with each other. So right, so well, that's I possible. Su- it, I suppose it's very possible. You know that King wanted that effect and they put it in there like that. Right. Maybe, yeah, yeah. But so that's that's pretty cool, you know. Um, also, I think it's the first song where King uses like a little short falsetto in these songs. I think so too. I think that's the first time he hits a real high note like that. Which, yeah, it's on the second track of the <laughs> tape, but still, it's the first time you get to hear him do it. Right. Yeah. It's where King Diamond starting to get his uh, his official uh, you know scream going. Uh, Crazy Tonight. Uh, um, this song starts pretty like laid back. With, uh, I think what the keyboard is like a very like mysterious sounding keyboard is, and, uh, yeah, and it's a it's, uh, d- d- little Pink Floydish, almost psychedelic, right. a little bit in the way it starts. Yeah, uh, it adds to the atmosphere. Of, right. Uh, yeah, and it's got that guitar solo that comes in while it's you know slow, and then uh, when it picks up, the vocals come in, and um, 
I noticed that their songs um, are not just straightforward rock. You know, there's like third song in. You can just tell that it's just not typical 70s, you know, uh, radio rock or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. It's got a progressive element to them that, you know, probably a lot of bands didn't really do this kind of heavy progressiveness kind of thing, I guess, back then, really. I don't know. I'm not really, like, into too many bands that are in this, from this time period in this style, so... Like, you know, Deep Purple and stuff. I'm, I'm not really into, into them, so I don't know how much... I mean, like, the, the, there's, there's a few I like a lot, but I, I couldn't tell you overall how many maybe might have been doing this style, but... I mean, just from, say, being on the board a couple years ago, like some of the stuff uh, Scott and Randy and some of the other guys would bring up, you know, I had never heard of before, but some of the, like Buffalo. Right. But they were doing heavy progressive stuff in like 73, 72. Hmm. Yeah. Um, Oh, yeah, it's not also not one of my favorite songs on the album. Um, But it's, uh, it's almost like a little... Like a psychedelic sounding song. Yeah, I do. I do like it. Um, I I really like uh, whatever he's doing to make the keyboard sound like they do in this. That. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, it does a good job with keyboards. Yeah, in uh, in uh, uh, a different time, if this would have uh, been recorded about. Five years later, you could have called it Requiem for a Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> not, uh, not that it sounds like the Pac-Man theme. Right. I just mean it sounds different. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, next song, Virgin. Uh, this song was a medieval tongue-in-cheek fairy tale. I re- I, this is a good one. I thought it was pretty rocking, man. I really like uh, the guitar yeah um of course you know there's no lyrics in the booklet so you have no idea i mean i still can't pick out I, too thing. yeah i have no idea what he's saying in this um other than i think virgin is said during the chorus parts huh. but uh that would make sense. you know what um this actually reminds me of a little bit and granted this isn't intentional because there definitely are lyrics, but it's worth a full tape. But um, I, do you know who Death SS is? I heard the name, yes. Okay, well, they were a thrash band uh, from Italy, and uh, Paul Chain, the original guitar player, left in the mid '80s to do his own thing, and it was more similar to like a goth rock type thing. But uh, there are no lyrics. All his vocals are phonetical. Okay. So it sounds like words, but he's not really saying anything. It's up to the listener to interpret what they want to hear. <laughs> That's not bad. I'll have to listen to them then. Yeah, also, um, uh, Paul Chain's Violet Theater is probably the best one to huh. start with. I can send it to you. Interesting. Yeah, I've heard them. I've heard of the name forever. I just never probably check them out. But. Well, uh, it's- Honestly, I mean, Death SS itself is obscure. Paul Chain's solo stuff is even more obscure. Oh, great. I love I, it. Uh, no yeah. I, well, I just mean I don't think it ever got an official release in America. I'm pretty hmm. sure it would have just been Italy. Oh. I could be wrong. I don't know, but this isn't about Paul Chain. It's no, it's not. Diamond. Anyway, <laughs> but, but, but my point being that, you know, even though I don't, and they can't make everything out all the time, you know. It's similar to that in a way because you can't. It you can kind of make out what he's saying, but you really can't. So. Yeah, exactly. Which is a shame. But... Yeah, but the way he sings still makes it enjoyable. Yeah. Um, in the booklet, it says, uh, and actually, Ib's going to talk about this. Uh, when the band would play this song, uh, King would have. Um, uh, wait for the solo to come on, you know, the guitar solo, and he would uh, have homemade bombs he would put around the stage. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, pretty dangerous stunt uh, that he would actually still do in Merciful of Fate for, I guess, you know, the early beginnings of the band. Um, one thing that I thought was cool, uh, I mean, you know, I love every all the players on, on, the, uh, on the whole album in general, but uh, I really like the bass parts in this song. The bass stands out a lot to yeah. me. 
It I mean, does. It's bass stands out on everything. Throaty in this, yeah. yeah. Um, I love the guitar solo in this song too. Oh, yeah. I think this. Not that I dislike any of them, but I think this is one of the real stronger ones. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Like almost every song, this is something that you like more than on the other song. Like the bass to me stands out on this one. Like one of the other songs, the drums will stand out more than the other parts, and it's just you know really cool. Like what they really ended up doing with just this uh, rehearsal thing. But, uh, yeah, so that's the first four songs for now, and uh, we'll do another four next week. But right now, we will kick over to our interview with Ib, and, oh, I thought you were going to say something. I I was, actually. <laughs> so a, another part of the reason I kept this shirt on for this, but uh, talking about that dark but kind of progressive style, although Witchfinder General was definitely sabbath worship but uh you know they kind of incorporate some of this late 70s sound into their stuff too minus the keyboards okay another band i really never listened to but i know who they are one day i'll listen to them uh, when i was talking to my buddy yesterday and we were talking i mentioned i got this shirt and he said oh really and i said yeah i've actually got two Witchfinder general shirts and he didn't say cool. He didn't say that's awesome. He just said, that is really fucking obscure, man. <laughs> <laughs> it is. You don't see many of those. Ever. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen one. It's funny. All right. Well, here we go with Ib and Mark. Enjoy. And enjoy it very much, please. And let us know in the comments what you think of the show so far. We're just beginning. Okay? It's. I mean, we're just a little rough right now, but, you know, it's going to yes. get better. I promise. And what you guys don't see is we've had several problems getting just the first part of this first episode <laughs> off the ground. Yes. So, but, uh, yeah, once we get into the more things that, like, Merciful Fate and King Diamond stuff that we, like, fully know without even having to listen to it a thousand times, and it, it's going to get, it's going to pick up like that. I promise. And if it doesn't, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. But we still got interviews, so you're going to see Michael Denner and uh, Pete Black and Snowy Shaw and... Uh, couple other people hopefully all right but yeah this is a great one to start with though this is one of my favorite interviews we've done yeah. so far uh you know it was a great guy and this is just the band so amazing this is a great era uh to be able to talk about and he he really goes deep with a lot of the stuff he says so yeah he does think and, all uh, you king diamond fans out there will enjoy quite a bit and if you like black rose uh definitely check out his band purple eclipse Right. In the meantime, let's go to Ib and Mark. Yeah, I love that uh, Black Rose album, uh, that CD that King released of those demos. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> it, it's very funny when you contact me, Wayne. Mm -hmm. I have not heard that CD in 20 years. Wow. Uh, I have not uh, think about King Diamond. Yeah. Nothing. Uh, I'm not uh, talking to King Diamond. Really? Okay. But that's of course that's I... too surprising. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes, we can talk later about that. Yes, yeah. yes. All right, good. Yeah. All right. Well, welcome to Rat Salad Review. Thank you. We are here with uh, Ib, Ed, and Mark from the band. Well, here from you got a new band now, but we'll talk about that later. But you were on. An album with King Diamond back in the yes. very early beginnings. Uh, yes. A band called Black Rose. Yes. And I don't know where you are in that picture. I don't know if you remember. The that. man who is on the uh, over to the right. Uh, that one right there. That's me. That's you. Way yes. back in the day. Way how back. Old, yeah, how old were you back then when you started this? You know, um, I was in the start of the 20s. Okay. Uh, so this is about 40 years ago. Yeah, wow. So when I you call me and we shall make this interview, I today I put the record on <laughs> and listening to all music because we are talking a lot between the numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The songs and I try to you know remember what happening. Right. What was happening? How was the atmosphere? Uh, how do we do this? And how do we start all this? Right. 
So yes. I hope stuff. something. I hope something came back. <laughs> Not, a lot of time came back. It was a very very exciting. I play about one year with with Kip Bendix Peterson. Right. He called Kip Bendix and became King Diamond later on. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. But 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 I think we shall start a little before. Yeah. Okay. And and. and because uh, the music we play on that CD is Black Rose music. Mm -hmm. No, I'm, I'm sorry. It is Cosmic Affair Band. Oh, okay. We called and we started five years before Kip came out. Oh, wow. wow. So I was about 15. Okay. And, oh, uh, wow. you know, at that time, uh, it was my brother and me who made the music. Oh. But in the start, we, 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 we listen, go to a lot of concerts in, in, in Copenhagen. Mm -hmm. You know, Deep Purple was our... Yes. Yeah, we <laughs> definitely, definitely can tell that. <laughs> my, my brother was Richard Blackmore. Right. Dressed in black, and you know, and I was John Gold. Okay. It was, you know, oh, very, yeah. our fans. Right. So uh, maybe you also can hear it on the music. We was inspired by Deep Purple. Um, Locked Up in the Snow, to me, it, that's such a great song. It really sounds like it could have been a B-side to Burn. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> of course, if you listen a lot to bands, it influences when you're yeah, making, yes. composed the music, and the sound is needed. But also Status Quo, Black Sabbath, Grand Funk, Genius After, all these uh, groups. We listened to and we watched a concert, and uh, me and my brother and Jesper, who is the bass, bass man, we will make a band. Mm. And we learned to play guitar. I played guitar in the start. Later on, my brother says to me, no, you have to play organ. <laughs> <laughs> so, there we start, play, I play organ, and after a couple of years, we start to make our own music. Right. Compose, me and my brother were sitting in our rooms that time, we were 16, 17 years old, and make all the music, and played in Cosmic Affair bands. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we made concerts, it was in a local area where we was popular. Only in the local area, school, uh, when school, high schools make parties, we was there, and, and, and I have something to show you. <laughs> just, just, but it, 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 this was... Oh, cool. This was just... Uh, Got it. It was just before King Diamond came with us. Wow. Uh, I play guitar, you, you see, and yes. Oh, and wow. Okay. Oh, cool. Nice. And um, suddenly my brother told us, I quit. I don't want to play in the band here, I quit. So we oh, wow. need a guitar... Uh, guitarist. Mm -hmm. Sorry for my English, but <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, and then some of our friends know a band called Brainstorm. Okay, yeah, that you may maybe recall. Yeah, I've heard of it. Yep. Brainstorm was uh, where Kim was playing, and uh, in Brainstorm he he he, he started to call himself King Diamond, mm. but uh, he has not, uh, you know, transformed him to King Diamond. Mm. It was in his head, it was King Diamond, but we didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. And, and uh, we started to play with uh, Kim, and Kim know a guy who played guitar. Right. Young. And they started to play our music in Black Rose. Okay. And um, we started to rehearse very, very much, three, four times a week. Uh, really rehearsing, and that music you you hear on the CD is from all these rehearsing, mm. because when we was rehearsing, some after six seven months, we used to re we put a microphone, two microphone, in a cassette recorder, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we took it and uh, we recorded a session. And we go home and listen to it and say, is there something we could do better? Something to make different? 
and we talk about it, and later it became what it is. You heard. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, just before Kim came to to us, and there we called it Black Rose. When Kim started, we named it Black Rose. Okay. But not Diamond, because King Diamond doesn't exist in our right. yeah. it, it, it was Kim, a normal guy like you and me. <laughs> very, very... Uh, uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> and um, of course, he has these thoughts about uh, King Diamond. And that universe he is today was not that time, but he was preparing this right. universe. He, um, we concentrate on the music, uh, and he concentrate of uh, Kim, King Diamond and his show. I remember uh, after a while he began to talk about bombs. Making bombs on the the, the stage. <laughs> I mean, uh, Kim, you uh, it's a, no, 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 it's too dangerous. No, 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 no. It's a, Kim was, <laughs> <laughs> and he makes these bombs, and he uh, and he talk about wheelchairs, you know. Yes. yes. Okay. Wheelchairs on the stage and uh, pig heads. <laughs> uh, you find, <laughs> and we. Okay. And uh, we said, okay, Kim, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Concentrate on the music and, and you try it. Yeah. And um, he gets some dolls, I remember. Put pig bloods in the dolls. And um, yes. Where, where would he get all the pig <laughs> stuff from? Just to, like the butcher or something? Uh, Kim was, as I record it, it'll remember, I think he was in a hospital. Working oh, okay. at the posture to be driving around all the patients, uh, and therefrom he can get stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me anymore. All right. <laughs> Ethan suddenly and he got the stuff. Wow. Also, he, he he knows a butcher. Okay. Okay. I think it's called butcher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bloods and all this. Yeah, I, um, I remember reading in that um, booklet that he did it. Um, he was developing that around a song I really like from that uh, demo, uh, Dr. Cranium. Dr. Cranium, yes. 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 It, it, it was, um, we wrote the songs, but Kim made the titles. Mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> after, after, of course, he made this uh, lyrics and, and, and text and make much to, to sing in the songs. Uh, and make the different in the music, we make it. He mm -hmm. only came with one number, yeah. and that was Holy Mountain Lights, I think. Oh, okay, okay, Holy Mountain Light. Maybe you can hear is a slight difference yeah. from the other numbers, yeah. it's from Brainstorm. Okay, 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 that makes a lot of sense. It does, it has, yes. a, it has a slightly different uh vibe to it, where yeah, it's a little bit more the, happy, uh, the, the happy other happy. material is more um. That heavier groove oriented, yes, like, uh, mid seventies England, yeah, mid seventies exactly. We are from yeah. that time, yeah. yeah. Well, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can't yes. get any more mid than it. Yeah, but, 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 um, but uh, uh, Holy Mountain Light sounds more theatrical, is I guess what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But it's very funny for me to hear it again. <laughs> I really like it. <laughs> it's it's really good. Um, I, I really yes. enjoy the bands playing on it. It's really tight. Yes. Um, the the only song I don't like is just that Radar Love cover. Yeah, and that's Golden Earring. Yeah, I, I can tell you why we play that number. 